All right, good afternoon, guys. Uh, just wanted to take a few minutes here. This video uh, involves Google Earth apps, uh, one of my favorite tools uh, to use in the classroom whenever it comes time to showing locations of things, uh, places that, uh, that I want my kids to see, routes, paths, all that good stuff. So uh, anyway, you're looking at my screen right now, and uh, we are at the Empire State Building. Let me go in here and delete these real quick so I can show you how they work. All right, so uh, for those of y'all new to uh, Google Earth, uh, it's a 3D version basically of Google Maps. A uh, really awesome tool. In fact, uh, when you first get in there, it's just a picture of the whole globe, uh, which is really awesome to see. You can see it spinning around. Uh, over here on the left, you can see all kinds of layers that you can do. We'll touch on that later. Uh, but today I wanna focus on the toolbar. This guy right up here. Okay, there's a lot of things that you can do with Google Earth, but I, I'm going to focus on just a few of them today. I'm not going to cover them all, but the ones that I use the most, most in my classroom are the ones that I want to cover right now. So let's just get started. All right, so here we are at the Empire State Building. Now, what you're used to seeing is just a basic image of the Empire State Building. Uh, but for purposes of right now, I've got it set to 3D buildings. We're gonna zoom in just a little bit. All right, so the first tool that I wanna cover is your place marker. Uh, when you click this plus sign, you're gonna get a box that pops up. And that box is going to allow you to name your place marker, tell you where, uh, you know, you get to tell it where you want it. Uh, and you're gonna have a yellow box on your actual map. You just click and drag that place marker wherever you would like it. Usually when it first pops up, it pops up in the middle of the screen. Um, so there at least is the option to move it, okay? So I've moved it uh, to right around where the Empire State Building is. And so right here, you'll notice that there's a latitude and longitude. It tells you the exact location of your place marker. Something that's really cool down the road when it comes time to creating scavenger hunts for your kids. Um, my kids have loved doing those. And so... Knowing the latitude and longitude gives you a, a little leg up and a, an easy way to create a scavenger hunt. All right, so we have style, view, altitude. These are all extras that you can cut how you can customize your place marker. So when you have a moment, just play around with those. Uh, this one I think is pretty cool though. The clamp to ground, you can actually do relative to ground. And so when you click that, it allows your place marker to be moved up into the air or whatever you would like. Uh, see right here, do, 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 do. there you go, it moves up and down. All right, you decide how high you want it. All right, uh, if, let's just leave it back to clamp to ground. All right, so you name your place marker. I'm gonna name this uh, Empire State Building that way later on. If I need to go back to that place marker very quickly, I have it down here in my places. I just click on it. It takes me there. Okay, awesome. All right, so the next one that I want to cover is our path, uh, add a path. And this one's pretty cool. It is very sensitive. Um, so, I mean, I've got shaky hands sometimes, so this is not always the best tool to use, but I have used it before. I think it's a great tool for you to know how to use. All right, so when it comes to create a path, if you'll notice in New York, it's kind of hard to see the streets. So uh, I guess they felt like they needed a ton of buildings or something. But uh, anyway, if you can't see your streets, down here in your layers, you have something called roads. If you click on that, you can see some of your roads. Now, if you'll notice, it's hard to see some of them because of our buildings. At that point, you just click on 3D buildings and boom, there you go. All right, so here's our Empire State Building right here where our pen is. I'm going to create a path. So I create the plus sign, and let's just put, uh, I don't know, jogging trail. <laughs> Not like I'm jogging, but we'll go with it. All right, so just decide where you want to start. Let's say I decide I want to start here. So when you're creating a path, you have to click and drag. You can't click and release. As soon as you release, that path is done. So you're going to click and start dragging. Now you can already see some of the problems you might have with creating a path. Literally, wherever your finger pushes that pin or that marker is where your path is going to go. 
So needless to say, I probably did not run through all these buildings or into all these buildings, or maybe I did. Anyway, at least I have an idea of my path. And that's it right there. All right. So now whenever I go over here, I have the same options. I can customize it. Okay. The cool thing about the path is you can look at the measurements. The measurements is going to tell you how far your path is, like how many miles. Uh, you've got all these different options here. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, you could also have your, your students create a path. Uh, just suggest that you give some room for error. If you have a path they, that you want them to create, you have a certain measurement, give them some room for error. Uh, maybe uh, plus or minus, I don't know, uh, 0.2 miles or 0.1 miles, or if you do feet, plus or minus 30 feet or whatever. That way they don't feel the pressure of getting it exact. All right, so we have our path. When we release it, you can see it right there. And you can make this line thicker if you want. Uh, it's your choice. All right, so that's create a path. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to leave the other there. And let's move all the way over here to your history. This is a really cool tool. This kind of brings us back to, to uh, Google Maps a little bit. And so what this allows me to do is just to allow me or my students to see how this area has changed throughout the year. Now, because I'm looking at just that, I'm going to release the roads so I can focus just on the history of the images of the city. Now, if you notice back here, we're in 1994. See how it's kind of black and white? Well, that's probably about all they had, and we're probably lucky we even have a satellite image from 1994. If we click on 1978, probably, yep, nothing. Got nothing. Okay, so you just play around. As you get closer to current, uh, you see the color and all that start to come in. You can see the, the increase in satellite image capabilities. So a uh, really cool tool, like in your city, your kids can see how it has developed over the years. Uh, I think that's a very valuable tool for you to use. You can also use that as a trivia type question. Like let's say you had a store that was built in 1995. You could ask the question, use these coordinates and tell me what building was created in 1995, and they should be able to locate that. All right, so the next tool, close that. Next tool, we're going to look at the sunlight. So when you click on sunlight, it's going to give you what the current sunlight is in that city according to your current time. Not theirs, yours. So right here, it's 548 here. All you got to do is you click and drag, go back and back, and your kids can see when it, okay, so when it's 302 here, what is it uh, there in New York? Okay, same fourth, da, da, da. So let's say here it's 752. Well, here the sun is still out at 745. Well, there, because they're an hour later, it's 845 or 852 or whatever there, so it's already dark. Okay, so they can see how the sun affects places. Really cool item to use for like uh, continents, Australia, Africa, whatever. Okay. All right, here we go. The next one that I want to show you is the ruler. Let's go ahead and close that. Go back to our regular view. All right, so the ruler. You have two options, line or path, and they mean just what they say. A line, you get just a line. You click release, go to your next point, click and release, and that should create a line, a straight line. So those of us with shaky hands might want to use a line for a better judgment of how far something is, like the perimeter. All right, so that's a line. You can do the same thing, centimeters, whatever. A path. A path is going to go until you tell it to stop. So here, if I go back here, I don't want to go all the way back there because that made it start over. Okay, see how that kind of messed everything up? So when you do a path, you are going to have to give a little leeway and stop it just before it hits that spot. Okay? Just a little hint. All right, so there is the path. So we're going to clear that and call that good. And here in a second, I'm going to go over this guy right here, one of my favorite tools in Google Earth. I think your kids will love it.